Hey y'all, in the beginning of this video, we start out like serious and you know, real focused gardening and then we're back to crazy me. So watch through the serious part, which is good. Good information and get to crazy me. I'll see ya there. We are working in the wetland garden today. And I have decided after having my wetland garden last year what my favorite plants were, which are clearly the sleepy hibiscus because it bloomed all year, and the climbing aster. Look at how green it is. And this climbing aster is weaving its way through the trunk of the sleepy hibiscus. So, what I have done, and there's still another plant, but hang on, let me tell you about these two. What I have done is, look at these little guys here. I grew these from seed. These are from seed that I collected from this sleepy hibiscus plant right here. And I'm going to add them around this one in this garden. I'm not going to add any more climbing aster because I think that one's just going to keep climbing its way through everything. So it's already fabulous. And this little beauty growing back here is the clustered bush mint, which you know I love. I love this plant. It is gorgeous and the pollinators went nuts over this thing. So guess what? I have two that I grew from seed from that plant over there, right here, and they're gonna go in this space. So imagine, these get the little white flowers covered in pollinators, then I'll have more of the sleepy hibiscus with the beautiful pink flowers, and then coming and weaving throughout the whole thing, will be the climbing aster which gets these like lavender purple flowers. It's going to be a beautiful combination. And here we are. I only planted two of the um, sleepy hibiscus because they can get big. One there, one there, and two of the bushmint. And I just watered them in and I watered the rest of my garden. And these bushmen, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for them. And I'm so happy to be able to grow them from seed. You might see them showing up at the nectary. Although I just started a new batch of them and it takes them a little while. Um, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know. And the clustered bushmint came into my garden as a result of these guys, my swamp milkweed, being eaten by rats because rats don't like mint. And that's how this clustered bushmint, which is now growing back, came to be in my garden. And it did a most fabulous job because the rats stopped eating my swamp milkweed. My weeds are back. You see them? Mm -hmm. So I got this new little tool. It's got the coolest name. It's called a cobra head on Amazon. I'll link it. You know, I think there's some new way where like I have a little shopping shelf or something that I can put direct links there. I don't know. I'll try and figure it out. But this is great for what I've got back here because I've got all these little narrow sections where the weeds just love to thrive. And I don't use pesticides or weed killers. So I'm constantly having that. And this is supposed to get down and get the root base out so they won't grow back so quickly. I'm sure they're gonna come back because they always do. thing with this is with my patio is like the weeds have like grown over the edges of it so it's hard for me to see where the lines are but I think as I get better at practice with this look at how 
far down those roots go that I um, will be more adept <laughs> with working at it. I don't know. I'm going to give it a try and see. And then see how all the dirt comes out? Once I get the weeds out, then I can just brush like the sand and dirt back in there. So we'll see how that goes. So this is everything I just rounded up. Could I have done it faster by hand? Maybe, but see how the roots are breaking? I think I'm going to have better luck over the long run with this because it gets down there. See? And it just gets the whole thing out. Okay, y'all. So you know the rule of four or five? Well, it's like four or five times five, maybe ten. Look and my lepidarium. Swamp milkweed, swamp milkweed, and there's six, five, five, six. I still can't count. <laughs> six tubes, floral tubes, with giant milkweed cuttings. And you guys, the problem is, well, it's actually not a problem. It's a f most fabulous thing. There are a monarch caterpillars. Look at all the little holes. All over all of the milkweed in my garden. I have been taking cuttings to bring in and the cuttings that I'm bringing in for the current caterpillars have caterpillars on them. There are so many. It's fabulous, but it's insane at the same time because now I have so many caterpillars in my lepidarium. And if you're hearing those what sounds to be obnoxious eating sounds in the background, that's just my little dog Ringo chewing on a stick. Look at all the milkweed cuttings. And they're not only all over my milkweed in the lepidarium. They're all over the milkweed in my garden. I already said that, but it needs to be said again. There's eggs. There's obvious snack spots where caterpillars have been munching. There's caterpillars. And they're on all of my milkweeds. My balloon milkweed, my giant milkweed, my swamp milkweed. And I even have a one of the, <laughs> there's a monarch butterfly right there. <laughs> I'm probably about to get more eggs. I even have one of those types of milkweed, that name that shouldn't be said, that name that I'm about to say. And don't you even post your little um, articles about how bad this is because we're not here for that. No, nobody wants that, so just don't. There is a tropical milkweed that came up on its own, which is why it's invasive and why I don't use it because I it needs to be somewhere where you can responsibly take care of it and if you can't make sure it's not going to spread to areas where people aren't going to be responsible and take care of it you know then then no but we're going to go see this monarch first of course it's on red pentas which I have more ready 
And um, I'll let you know when the red pentas is on the way to the nectary again. Um, oh my gosh, I've got so much to tell you. Okay, focus. There's a tropical milkweed that came up from seed on its own, but it's in the butterfly haven and it's in a pot. So I've just left it be there because, well, obviously I'm gonna be able to see it. It's the only one I have. But if it does go to seed, the seed's not gonna go anywhere because it's in the haven and the wind will blow and it'll just get stuck on the walls of the haven. Plus, I'll be able to catch the seeds before they go anywhere. But it too is covered in caterpillars. And there, do you see that him? There's a big old nasty wasp in here. Look at him. That's one of the top predators. That's one of the top predators for uh, baby caterpillars and eggs are those wasps. I bet he's in here looking for these caterpillars. And now my little heart's saying, oh, you should take them all in. But I can't. I do not have enough milkweed to feed all of these caterpillars. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough to feed all the ones that are in there. Hang on a second. There's a golf fritillary. Look, see him over there? He's over there in the haven with the maypop. And there's a lizard right there. Just tried to snatch him up, literally. Look at him. No, 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 no. It's always an adventure in my garden. <laughs> Butterfly is safely out. Lizard is going to have to find something else to eat. Better not be a caterpillar or a butterfly. Okay. Now, four hours later, I'm going to show you the caterpillars that are all over this tropical milkweed. Do you not see? Look. Look at that big chunk and look at that. I, I bet you I'm going to flip this over and they're probably already all gone. Nope, 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 nope. There's one. Hi, sweetness. Oh, you all know I'm going to take that one in. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. We need, like, I don't see any more. Look, there's more eggs. Oh my gosh. All right, come here, booger. Where'd you go? There you are. Oh, and there's an egg on the leaf, too. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I'm going to need a 12 step program. Look at that little egg. And look at that sweet little baby. Look how cute it is. How can we consider leaving that behind? We're not. We're taking it in. No worries. Oh my gosh. What are we going to do? I mean, what are we going to do? I'm considering... <laughs> watering my giant milkweed with some miracle grow to make it grow faster and don't sass me about the miracle grow i know they're owned by monsanto and i don't want to use miracle grow but i have some and i'm going to use it up and i'm going to look for other things because oh if you want to know about all that just google it because i'm i'm not the one to explain it to you i just personally do not want to support that company so anyway i'm gonna go put this guy inside and i might miracle grow my giant milkweeds <laughs> to make them grow miraculously and just use up what miracle grow i have left you know this is what i've been doing for my floral tubes um just sticking one leaf in them especially for my swamp milkweed and now this tropical milkweed and it's working out well because then i can just get the one caterpillar but my plant can continue growing but now i have one caterpillar and one egg it's all right it'll do look how cute it is you can see i did this one here the same way this is a swamp milkweed leaf look at that but wait, there's more. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Everywhere. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just came back out in my garden to film something else. I spot these eggs so easily. That's a little tiny golf fritillary egg on this little tiny maypop coming up in the middle of nowhere. So... Now I got to pluck that out 
and take it in. Are you kidding me? Look at that little egg. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to have to order some more floral tubes. I'm going to just set this little egg over here with my monarchs in the monarch room because the golf fritillaries, I might just eat that up if I put it over here where they are. I feel like I have to come out in my garden with blinders on to talk to you so I don't get distracted. There's three things I want to chat about. Number one, my retirement is fast approaching. I have one week left. And let me tell you, it is going to be a hard week. Not hard to leave, but hard to go because I know what is so close. That freedom is so close. I'm going to tell you all once I get retired, I'm going to chat with you a little bit about just a little bit, you know, not a lot, but about some of the, um, uh, just the stuff like me physically stuff. Okay. The monarch flying around me. Um, I am so excited. So I have to work all next week, Monday through Friday, and then we have spring break. And then I have to go back that one day after spring break, that Monday. And then March 19th, I, I will be free. Mm, can we just have a moment for that? Oh, it's going to be good. All right. Second thing I want to talk to you about. Look at this. She's laying eggs. She's laying eggs. Oh, I didn't show you this. this is my swamp milkweed. There's eggs and caterpillars on it too. And look, we're even getting more eggs. And here I said I wasn't going to get distracted. All right. Second thing I want to talk about is this YouTube channel. This is my baby. It has been my baby for three or four years now. I have got 2,500 subscribers, but there's something going on with YouTube where it's not sending out my videos. Like I can, it, it gives me all this stuff. It gives me all this stuff to look at. Um, and it'll say notification sent like 19. And so a lot of you, I do not think are getting notified when my videos go out. And I'm really not sure how to fix that. Um, even people who have their notifications turned on, it's not going out. And the other wacky thing is, like I said, I've got 2,500 subscribers here on uh, Instagram. I have almost 14,000 followers on my Facebook page. I have 14,000 going on to 15,000 followers. Like, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. So if you have any helpful insights or um, if you want me to I don't know, I could send an email with a link to my videos when I post them, except I don't have your emails. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do about that, except you're just gonna have to know, Here, here's what it is. You just have to know that that's happening, and so you will just have to go and look for my videos. You'll have to go onto YouTube and just search for Butterfly Gardening Inspirations. You'll find my page, tap videos, and it'll have them listed in order that they were put out. Because I think it works better to watch them in order because it's like a continuation all the time of one thing leading to another. So there's that, let me know. And now finally for the funny thing, you're gonna die.
<laughs> I have to go sit down. Okay, so um, chat GPT. It's like that AI thing that, um, um, I don't know, it's being used for all sorts of things. Anyway, I, I um, ask it things for when I want information super fast. Because you know how like you Google something and you get all this other stuff and not exactly what you wanted and you have to kind of sort through it? Well, I found I like just going to chat GPT because it just answers my question and it doesn't give me all this other stuff. But what I'm finding more and more is its answers are wrong. <laughs> and um, I usually will check and verify its answers now. But the other day I posted on Facebook where I have 14, almost 15,000 followers because Facebook algorithm knows what it's doing. Okay, that's done. I'm done with the sass. Um, Um, I posted a picture up close of a sulfur caterpillar and one of the people said it doesn't look like it has eyes. Do they not have eyes? And in that photo it really looked like they didn't have eyes. <laughs> so, look who. A beautiful sulfur on my pentas. Y'all, I just went inside to get my tripod because my weak arm that hasn't been to the gym because I've been stressed out at my job. <laughs> um, it's tired of holding up the phone so I can tell you this funny story. <laughs> and so when I went in to get it, it came back out. There was that butterfly and I had to show you. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is so much better. I hardly ever use a tripod. I'm always like holding my phone because it's totally grab and go here in my garden. Okay, but this is a good story. <laughs> so. I went to my chat GPT. Oh, I have 50,000 some odd photos on my phone. I know that's bad. I did not want to look through 50,000 photos on my phone to find the picture that I know I have multiple pictures of sulfur caterpillars up close where you can see the little eye spots. So I thought, you know what? I'll just ask ChatGPT to show me a picture of a sulfur caterpillar with its eyes up close. And I'll just share that picture to the person because it's just a picture in a comment on Facebook just to let them see the eyes. And <laughs> this is what it gave me. <laughs> is that not the most ridiculous thing you have ever seen? Let me tell you, ChatGPT, not a trustworthy source. Not at all. Okay, well, I do hope you enjoyed this video. It's all over the place. Crazy just how I love it and how it's going to be. And it's going to be so much more as soon as I'm free. I cannot wait. In the meantime, tap the like button on this channel. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to my channel. We do crazy butterfly gardening things here. And post a comment, um, even if it's just a, a butterfly emoji or a heart emoji or a flower emoji or any any emoji something because every tap every every comment every click of some kind shows YouTube that you find my videos interesting to the point where you are inspired to react in some way so react in some way and thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.